All right, so in this video, I am going to talk about our simple model of public goods and then uh, uh, the concept of reservation price and hopefully towards the end efficiency. All right, so here is the simple model we have. So we have just for simplicity, two agents. I'm going to call them agent one and agent two. Well, to be honest, it really doesn't make any difference if we have more than two agents. All right. Well, um, you may wonder why are we talking about uh, two agents? What if we have only one agent? Well, in fact, all everything, all the discussions here would go through if we have only one agent. But obviously, the public good provision problem could be very simple because, well, there's only one agent who's going to use the public good. So it's not really public good because, I mean, the, the public consists of one agent. So for that reason, it makes more sense to have at least two agents. But, you know, three or five agents makes no difference. All right. So in this model, we're going to have two agents. Again, I'm going to call them agent one, agent two. Well, what do they bring? So into this market, those agents are, 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 are bringing or they are born with some wealth, some money. All right. So the initially agent one brings W1 dollars and agent two brings W2 dollars. So these are money. All right. Some non-negative uh, non-zero numbers, all right? So these are money, how much money they have. This is their income, this is their budget, okay? Not budget, I'm sorry, their income. Well, uh, so we're gonna call it contribution. So let's suppose they contribute, well, who determines this? So these are, this is, uh, in case my notation isn't clear, this is G1, this is G2, okay? My Gs are a bit uh, off maybe. I'm sorry for this. So the contributions, who determines that? Well, I'm going to leave that aside for now. All right. So any contributions so somehow agent one decided to contribute G1 dollars for the public good and agent two decides G2 dollars for the public good. All right. So let's suppose it's given to us. Let's assume. So G1, G2, these are also dollar amounts. And they are also positive. W1, W2 are also positive. And then we have a, another set of notation, uh, private consumption, X1 and X2. Remember, in this model, we're going to assume there are only two goods. Public good, say hospital. All right, so these two guys are going to build a hospital. Um, and the hospital is like a one zero decision. We either build the hospital or not build the hospital. And so you spend G1 dollars for hospital. I spend G2 dollars for hospital. And we initially have W1 and W2 dollars of wealth. And X1 and X2 basically is how much money. So remember, we have two goods, uh, the <clears throat> public good and then the private good. The private good uh, basically everything other than the public good itself. All right. So again, it's like the apples, bananas, tomatoes, the cars, the TVs, everything else other than the public good. So this is, so it's just, we, we, uh, we group it as just one good and we call it private consumption. And again, these are dollar amounts. So you spend X1. So we're not going to say, oh, this person is going to buy X1 unit of private. So these are not units of good. So these are all dollar amounts. All right. And they are also uh, non uh, negative. So they could be zero. Oh, these could be zero as well. But the income shouldn't be zero, right? If it is zero, uh, if one agent has no money, well, then actually it boils down to just one agent case. So both agents should have positive money. Uh, they may have contributed nothing. Uh, but nevertheless, their private consumption could be uh, zero, but they are non-negative nevertheless. So these are all money. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So what is the budget constraint that the each agent is facing? Well, very simple. The amount of money you spend on private consumption and the amount of money you spend on public good consumption, let's think it that way, G1, uh, has to be equal to your total wealth, W1, all right? I mean, you cannot spend, basically, I mean, if this equality doesn't make sense, you cannot spend 
more than uh, uh, what's left uh, from your income, from your wealth, once you spend G1 dollars on the public good, all right? So this is how much money you can spend on private consumption. Um, the thing is, you don't want to spend less than that because there are only two goods in this economy. Very simple environment, remember. Public good versus private good. And there is no saving. There's going to be no future. So there's no point of saving. And you will have later, I'm going to talk about utility where you actually have higher utility on both private consumption and public good consumption. All right. So therefore, you should spend all your money. But you can't spend more than what you have because you can't borrow money. So there is no bank in this uh, picture. All right. So it's a very simple uh, consumption decision. Uh, so the second agent also has a similar uh, budget constraint. Uh, her consumption on private good cannot exceed uh, what's left of her income once she pays G2 dollars on uh, public good uh, consumption, all right? So uh, these are the budget sets, budget constraints, I'm sorry. Well, the thing is, the public good, let's suppose, costs C dollars. So this is the cost of implementing the public good. So remember, my example was building a hospital. So if, if these two guys are gonna build that hospital in their neighborhood, it's gonna cost them C dollars. Well, then they should have the G1 and G2 dollars spend, uh, these are, remember, the amount of money to build on, uh, to build the uh, public good, well then, G or to operate the public good, all right? So you can also think it that way. So the G1 plus G2, so these are financing the public good. So G1 plus G2 should be greater than or equal to C, all right? Well, if it is the case, well, then the public good will be implemented because there's enough money to finance the public good. If it is less than C, the public good is not going to be implemented, all right, because there isn't enough money. Well, obviously, it shouldn't be strictly greater than C, right? I mean, if, if, I mean, if we need $1 million to build a hospital, why are we together collecting $5 million? It's like, all we need is just $1 million. So therefore, but that's fine. We can just leave it as is, is like, because this is just a, a, a statement about when the public good will be implemented. As long as the G1 plus G2 contributions, the total contribution exceeds the total cost. All right. So this is total uh, contribution, contribution, and this is the total cost uh, of implementing the public good. And then finally, in our model, we have the preferences. So these agents uh, uh, have preferences over these two goods, the public good and the, uh, and, and the pri private good. So remember, X1 is how much money they spend on... Uh, X1 is how much agent 1 spends on private goods. And G is basically an indicator uh, function. So G it takes value one or zero. So if G, remember, so here the public good is a zero one decision, all right? So you either build the public good and then for the rest of your life, enjoy it. Or you don't build the public good and hence for the rest of your life, which is, well, just one period in a sense, um, you don't enjoy the public good. Uh, so it's not like, oh, I'm going to building the public good and I'm going to frequently visit the hospital. No, there's no such thing. So the, the model is very, very simple. All right. So you can't consume the public good in a continuous way. It's zero or one. All right. Um, so you either don't or you do um, consume or have the public good. So if G is equal to one, it means you have the public good. If G is equal to zero, you don't have the public good to consume, to use. Uh, to, to enjoy. So therefore, each agent has a utility on two things, the private consumption and then the public good uh, consumption. G uh, determines, G indicates whether the public good is uh, available or not. All right. So we assume that the utility functions are increasing. All right. Increasing on both terms. I mean, the more money you spend on uh, private uh, consumption, happier the agents will get. And here, 
uh, when the utility is uh, when g so fixing x1 when g is equal to 1 versus g equals 0 all right so we we basically utility fix the x uh, g equals 1 versus utility of any agent by the way the name of the agent doesn't matter fix her utility the same agent obviously fix her consumption on private good and then g equals zero so we want that this thing is greater than all right than this thing so having the public good is valuable for the agents for both agents uh, so that's usually the assumption the utility functions are increasing okay so in this framework we are going to define a reservation price so what is reservation price what's the meaning of it